Welcome back to the Law and Crime Network. I promise you guys we had a lot going on here. There's a lot sizzling in this new studio. But you know what? Over the weekend, you may be aware of this Major Matthew Golston. For 2010, he was a Green Beret, and he was charged with murdering a man who was linked to the Taliban overseas. Well, in, in, in addition, last week, we know that there was this Chinese tech, uh, tech rather, uh, executive who was extradited to the United States. In both instances, President Trump has now weighed in on each of these things, essentially countermanding the judicial system as to what's going on with regard to both of those individuals threatening to undo the Chinese tech executive scenario, but also now coming out on behalf of the uh, major, Matthew Golson. I've got two unbelievable guests with me. The first one is Gene Fidel. He's a military and justice expert, legal expert at Yale Law School. So nobody better than him to break down this case with the major. And of course, our very own Brian Ross, who who's a chief investigative reporter here at the Law and Crime Network. Brian, what's happening? Well, good afternoon, Bob. It all threatens the integrity of the judicial system. Let's begin with uh, Major Golston. He was a decorated Green Beret in Afghanistan, Silver Star winner. He went on Fox News in 2010 and essentially admitted that he had killed in cold blood a member of the Taliban because he was trying to protect his uh, troops. Here's what Golston said to Fox News at the time. Yeah. Meeting with tribal leaders. Did you find the suspected Taliban bomb maker? We did capture a fighter and then ID material, weapons. We recovered radios, the small icon radios that the Taliban were using, so quite a bit of material. But at the time, you think this is the guy? Yeah, absolutely. Shortly after releasing the Taliban detainee, Goldstein took matters into his own hands. Did you kill the Taliban bomb maker? Yes. Not only did he kill him, he took him out behind the base, buried him in a shallow grave, and then later that night went back with other soldiers, took the body out of the grave, and burned its remains. Well, after he went public with this uh, on Fox News, uh, the Army had no choice, of course, but to open an investigation. And just last week, he was charged by the Army with premeditated murder. Well, that led to a tweet storm from the President of the United States, uh, Donald Trump, who posted this Saturday morning. At the request of many, I will be reviewing the case of a U.S. military hero, Major Matt Ghoston, who was charged with murder. He could face the death penalty from our own government after he admitted to killing a terrorist bomb maker while overseas. That tweet from the president occurred just hours, or minutes in fact, after an appearance on Fox News by experts talking about the very same case. Welcome back. A serious story here. A decorated war hero who fought for our country overseas now a suspected war criminal. Former Green Beret Major Matt Goldstein could face the death penalty from our own government after he admitted to killing a Taliban bomb maker while overseas. Essentially almost verbatim from the president's tweet. The Fox report came first and then the president's tweet followed, Bob. So now the question is, he has weighed in. Does that complicate or, in fact, obstruct or corrupt the process? You know, we, we see more and more of this, Brian, where, and again, I'm trying to think of the days when I was the prosecutor and the governor was in charge. Never did they ever interfere with our investigative matters and things we did. We, we worked as a team with one another, um, and, and it's dissembling. But you know what? I, I think, you know, Gene, to get to you, you're the expert. Have you ever seen anything like this? And moreover, do you think that... It sends a chilling effect when the commander-in-chief is essentially siding with, um, against the government, if you will, probably not having anything of the investigative file, but apparently getting his data from Fox News. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, w where to begin, Bob? Uh, the peculiar thing about this case is that the president has intervened in support of a criminal, uh, a, 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 a person who is under charges. Uh, ordinarily, when we think of unlawful command influence, which is the part of the forest we're in here, uh, the command influence is being exercised to the detriment of the soldier. Uh, that's not this case. What uh, President Trump seems to be saying in his tweet, if you can uh, sort of decipher it, 
is uh, very, very uh, sympathetic to uh, Major Goldstein. Um, now, uh, what, what is to be done or said about this? The first thing I want to say is that uh, despite uh, the, uh, the kind of details that have come out in media accounts, everybody should hold the phone, actually, and not draw conclusions as to uh, the guilt or innocence or, or appropriate punishment if, uh, if there is a guilty finding. Uh, in the case. The case is just beginning. There hasn't been an Article 32 preliminary hearing. So, uh, therefore, I don't want to comment on uh, wh whether uh, this particular individual has committed an offense or not. It's an allegation, uh, uh, and we'll find out, because the Article 32 investigation is going to be open to the public. Now, the question is, what is the impact of the president's tweet? And the impact is that he seems to be saying uh, at least that this should not be a capital case. That seems to be on his mind, um, which is, you know, that's uh, he's entitled to his opinion on that. But the problem is that there are people subordinate to him in the military chain of command who have to exercise their independent judgment as to whether the charges against uh, a major uh, Goldstein should be pursued as a capital matter. Beyond that, I think the uh, concern is uh, allowing the military justice system to rock along and, and uh, allowing everybody to get a better feel for uh, the issues. Now, uh, a question that comes to my mind is uh, how come we're just having this, uh, this matter uh, ventilated now rather than several years ago. Uh, what was it that impelled the Army to revoke Major Goldstein's? Yeah, yeah Gene, I, 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 Brian, one of the things that concerns me kind of gets to what Gene is saying. There is a process that's in place. We follow that process. We don't do it based upon fan interaction or media accounts. I was the boss, okay? I did it straight away on the law and the facts. Can you get it wrong? Sure. But we, it's, this is in its infancy. And the idea that many are requesting that he review this should not be the standard. Let the process play itself out. Well, exactly. When you were a state prosecutor, if the governor had said, I don't like this case at all, it has all sorts of implications for people who report to him. And beyond that, there's also the case, I believe, that what does the message this sends to people in Afghanistan? Uh, if we have an army soldier charged with murder and the president has already prejudged it and suggests there could be a pardon, he's going to do something, it really is a gift to the Taliban in their argument that the U.S. doesn't care about Afghan civilians. And you know what? That's a great point. I just want to jump off on that, Brian, and, and as well as Eugene. You, and you're also undermining the system that we have. There are checks and balances within the system. This should not be done in a public forum where, again, our institutions are taking a beating. Now, there are many institutions in which things can be corrected and things go wrong. But it shouldn't be a public forum to beat up on our communities that are in charge of investigating and prosecuting cases. Use the legal process to do that if you need to, behind the scenes if you think that something's unjust. To me, this is just something to try to make people feel good that are in support of this guy. I, I, I don't know, Brian, real quick, what do you think about that? I, I think you're right about that. It seems to be a populist point of view, support our troops. But there's a lot behind it. And in fact, the superiors in the Army are the ones who decided to bring these charges. Yeah, and Gene, to, to uh, Brian's point, uh, he's right. Had the governor ever called me, which interestingly, when I got sworn into office, he said, you'll never hear from me again. He actually called me, so you'll never <laughs> hear from me again. Um, but it, it, even when I was the boss, if I was very careful to make sure that my staff knew that they were to exercise their independent judgment, even if that judgment may be different than mine, I would always tell them, you can come into the room, you can express yourself. Afterwards, I'm going to make a call. Everybody has smiles on their faces when they go out, and you exercise execute my orders, but it wasn't done in a public way like this. Well, let me, let me comment. Uh, military justice, although it's increasingly like civilian justice, it remains uh, uh, different in important respects. Now, could President Trump uh, basically abort this prosecution? The answer is yes, he could. He could do it by simply giving an order. Uh, he could do it by issuing a pardon. Christmas is all, almost here. Pardons happen around this time of year. Uh, should he do that? In my opinion, uh, it would be very premature to do either of those things. And if he did either of those things, he'd have to take the political heat. I think your point about uh, uh, the administration of justice and fostering public confidence in the administration of justice is particularly potent when you're talking about the military justice system. Uh, it has to gain and earn 
and keep public uh, esteem and public respect for the administration of justice. And if that doesn't happen, what's going to, what you're going to see is people are going to say, well, I'm not so sure my kid or I are going to get a fair shake if I come under charges in the military and people are going to vote with their feet. They won't join up. Yeah, excellent. excellent. Have, that's what we have to avoid. That's the point. Brian, to your point, I'm going to, the geopolitical consequences, when you keep adding the, the attacks on the institutions in such a public fashion over and over again, what is the rest of the world? Forget about that region of the world. Uh, do they have any confidence that things are being done according to process as opposed to emotional reactions to watching a TV show? Well, there's kind of a populist theme here, or sort of a mob justice. Uh, the president says he could intervene with the arrest of the, the Chinese executive if that helps the trade talks. Mm -hmm. uh, he suggested he's not going to go after the uh, Saudi prince, who mm -hmm. uh, the CIA, his own CIA, says uh, gave the orders to kill uh, the journalist Kosogi. So it seems to me it suggests a deterioration of the standards of justice that we've ex had in this country and the military justice, although some say military justice is to justice as military music is to music, still it has a system and needs an integrity should not be challenged in this way, it seems. Brian Ross, always bringing the heat with these uh, stories. Thank you so much for the excellent reporting. And Gene Fidel, thank you so much from Yale Law School, military expert. Couldn't have a better guy than you guys. Thanks so much. We'll be right back.